Okay, everyone, thank you for your patience. Uh, what we'd like to do is start with the webinar in just a moment. And what this will be is a training program for you to learn about new products and as hosted by VIA Global Health. So as you know, VIA Global Health has over 50,000 products on our sourcing platform. But we like to feature some of our most innovative products, uh, products like the Amoyo Kudu Wave, it, which is what Dr. Dirk will take you through in just a moment. Uh, but you can see that here on the homepage of our site and our featured innovations. One of the things you'll find immediately about the Acuda Wave product is on our product page, all of the information you need, looking at the different models available, regulatory approvals, different pictures of the product as well. So you can see it used both in the clinical environment, in the field environment, but also uh, just the nice product shot as well. Any additional features, specifications, uh, variations of the product as well. And then of course the manuals and data sheets and videos because we know that is very important for your private inquiries and tenders as well. So what we try to do is give you as much information as possible. If a customer comes to the site and requests a quote, they can easily do that here and then put in their information and their expected order quantity that will send a request to us at Via Global Health and we can help to supply that, that quote and also that product to you with all the logistics and payment information as well. If you are one of our verified distributors, you would not be taken to this page. Instead, you would be able to request an invoice directly on our website. Any leads that come through this form would be passed directly to you as per the typical process. Um, so again, I'll take you back to the home page here. It looks like there may be some technical issues back on uh, the Amoyo side. So I'll give them just a moment to see if they can maybe restart. Uh, in the meantime, what I'll probably do is just leave the, the page up for Amoyo as well. And you can review that. If you want to go to our site and see that for yourselves, you can just go to viaglobalhealth.com and find the Kudu Wave on the home page, or you can type in this uh, URL here directly and find our page. It sounds like everyone else is back on the line. So what I like to do is just, uh, again, Via Global Health is proud to the host, Emoyo, and Dr. Dirk, who is the founder of Emoyo and the creator of the Kudu Wave. Uh, so with that, I can hand it off to the expert of this device to talk to you through the demonstration of the products, to tell you a bit more about the benefits, who would use them, how to sell them best, and then answer any of your questions at the end. So with that, sir, I'd like to hand it to you to talk us through the product and give a quick demonstration as well. Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Dr. Kukumur. I'm a medical doctor. But I started um, a biomedical engineering company a few years ago, and we are innovating new products and um, putting very interesting products on the market that doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Okay. One of them is the Kudu Wave audiometer, as you can see here. Okay. Um, let me explain to you the typical audiometry setup that you will find in an audiologist's room, or in the ENT's room, um, or in an occupational healthcare clinic where they're doing occupational healthcare testing on patients. Typically, you will have a sound booth. It's a, I don't have a picture here with me now. But as you will have a sound booth, um, I think assume many of you already have hear, had hearing tests in your life. You will sit inside that sound booth. It's like a, like a large fridge that you sit in with a fridge door closing. And then there's a cable with a headset that goes to your head. Outside the sound booth, there is also a cable going to a, um, an audiometer. It's a box with buttons and knobs on it. Okay. So, then you need an audiologist or a nurse or doctor to operate that specific um, um, audiometer. So it's a massive setup. The other thing that also needs to happen, you also have to calibrate that, that sound booth that is quiet enough and you have to calibrate the audiometer. Now all of those things make it kind of impossible to be mobile and to go to remote areas and even moving from factory to factory in an in industrial um, setting. So what the Kudu Wave does, it takes that sound booth, the headside inside the sound booth, the audiometer on the outside, all the cables, and it 
all put it in here, okay, into a single machine. Okay, so this machine is um, a machine with electronics on the inside. If I open this one side, you will see on the inside there are electronics in here with a pump also and things like that. And all of these things are the um, electronics that will produce the sounds that will be played into the patient's ear. So I'm just resending it on my side. So for the first time it's possible literally to um, pick up a little case where this machine is in. You travel to a remote primary healthcare clinic and you can do testing there. Okay. So here you see the equipment. Um, the specific cup has got a little ear. Uh, this cup will block sound. Okay. And then there's a little ear tip like this with a hole in that I will literally plug into a tube on this side. So this tube is connected to the audiometer. Okay. So I'm going to put it onto my um, head. I'm just going to remove my headset now. Hope you all can hear me still. Okay. So I'm going to put it on like this and I will plug the ear tip in here. Okay. And then I will insert the ear tip into my ear like that. So what you see here is the sound will play through this tube into my ear. The sound is blocked um, because of the cup and because of this tube. I'm going to take this off so that I can hear you guys. So there's two levels of sound blocking. Okay. And because of that, you can block sound better than any other sound booth or headset combination. So what it means is if you're in a environment where you're testing and there's a sound booth with someone sitting inside the sound booth and there's a chair with someone with a good wave sitting on the chair the person inside the sound booth will hear a truck passing first okay and this makes gives you power to go virtually anywhere this machine is a not just a screening audiometer it's a diagnostic audiometer it means you can do speech testing it can also do bone conduction if you've got the bone version, okay? And it can also do extended high frequencies. So most of the audiometers will test only up to 8,000 hertz, but a good wave can test double to 16,000 hertz. So what that means, is it can monitor for hearing loss due to medication that can cause hearing loss, like ibuprofen or Lasix or, um, or antibiotics that they use for multi-drug resistant TB or for chemotherapy. So it's got a spectrum of um, products. It's got the Prime, the Plus and the Pro. The Prime is the one that's used for occupational healthcare usually. That's used for screening and that specific device um, is, is, doesn't have bone conduction diagnostic capabilities. Then the one in the middle is called the PLUS. That one has got the bone conductor, can do speech testing, and it's usually the machine that audiologists and ENTs will use to do diagnostic testing, to fit hearing aids, and to make decisions what type of procedures to perform on the patient. Then there's the PRO that does extended high frequencies that goes up to 16,000 hertz that is used for, um, for autotoxicity monitoring, specifically, mostly in chemotherapy and multi-drug resistant TB. Okay. So those, are, uh, those products are, are very lightweight, um, um, it comes in very lightweight boxes. It's easy to move it around with you. Important with this product is, like the typical audiometer, will have buttons and knobs that you can turn. There's no knobs on here. You have to plug it, a USB cable, into the PC. And on the PC is all the software and the knobs and buttons that you have to press. So what we also went, we went further, is we made the software automatic. So you don't need a professional to do the testing. The testing is very logical testing and it will follow standard ISO protocols to do automatic testing um, and you can test the patient um, all by itself. So you typically only need a facilitator like a nurse to put the audiometer on the patient's head 
and the nurse needs to know how to press the water button and test what happen. It's very simplified explaining to you, but the principles is important to understand. Um, so it means you as an audiologist or an ENT surgeon or doctor can send a nurse out in the field to a school and they can then test the school. They use the automatic test returns. You get the results and you interpret the results. The results are shared via the internet. You can, whenever a test is happening, you can immediately see the, soft, the, the test results appearing on your computer screen. If you, for instance, a doctor sitting a, a hundred kilometers away from the patient. So it's all got a cloud shared principle. It's got also other features like the software, like um, QR codes. If you've got a QR code on the patient, you just scan the QR code and the test, it's, test will start immediately. The, um, the one of the questions that people usually ask is, is um, has it been validated? Does it have certifications? Yes, C certifications, TGA in Australia, FDA and so on. And we've got nine international publications, all validation publications, because we rock the boat a little bit. So we make certain um, claims that we can test outside sound booths, we can test automatic, you can test over the internet using teleaudiology or telemedicine. So we had to do clinical trials and publish them to actually prove our, um, our claims. So there's nine publications that's available for download on the internet. There's multiple dissertations, multiple advanced reports by research institutions. Um, we've got all the evidence that for the claims that we are making. So you mentioned uh, one question that came in about the software, but is the software something that needs to download? Does it come with the device? Yes, so the software is free with the device. Um, it's actually kind of part of the device because that is where you operate the device from. Software is an electronic medical record, very basic electronic medical record, very fast, um, very easy to install. You download from the internet, deinstallation, and you get going. Okay. Um, okay. So there's, it's also the, the software is also French, Spanish, um, Portuguese, and German. Okay, right there. So from here on, this is the the, the startup screen. Um, I'll go over to English. Um, you will start up. Left hand side, you will see folders where you can, for instance, do a demo. Um, patients in, you can add a patient here by clicking adding a patient and you will add the patient's details here um, with his identification details, you can even do his birth date, you can have his gender here and very important are the notes that you can add here. One of them is for instance a good wave peer tone test. Um, if I add a peer tone test here, I can select a, 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 a pre-recorded um, um, test, for instance I can do a diagnostic test, um, there I'm going to do, select the diagnostic test um, and click next in the right top part, this is the page where I will condition the patient, see if he can actually hear the sound, present the tone and see if he can actually hear the sound and if he can hear the sound I will then um, click the next button, I can also do an automatic conditioning, we select the language and it will start automatically um, to do conditioning and then the automatic test will start. I can select to see the audiogram. Here I'm seeing the audiogram and the test is happening at the moment. And on the right hand side you can see how the test is happening and you're waiting for the patient to press a button. I can go over to a manual mode by pressing pause, I press up and down for louder, lower frequencies, higher frequencies, and I can present a tone if I want to, like pressing there. I can also add masking, this is where I add masking, the contralateral side, um, and then I can jump from left to the right side, and I can also add um, areas so that um, you can actually explain to the patient how the software is working. The top side are actually the ambient noise monitoring bars, that's the important part. This specific um, key um, cursor here is never allowed to go over 
Um, those bars are never allowed to go over it because then you will see on the right that there's a noise too loud. And that is it. Once you've finished doing the test, um, um, you will then eventually say save and the test results will be saved and it will be visible in electronic medical record where you can preview them um, here and print them if you want to. You can also save it as a PDF if you want to. So if I want to go back and add a new patient, I'll typically go to home. I'll see these are the last patients that I've added. I can go back to that patient um, and immediately I'm on that specific patient and I can continue to do further tests on it. Other tests that I can do is for the speech discrimination. This is a speech discrimination test where I will um, determine whether a person has got a, a, a discrimination problem for software, for, for understanding words, that is the Maryland C and C word list. Um, and I will present the word, for instance, by playing jar there. And I will say correct. If he said the word correct, again correct, boil. If he said tough, incorrect, I will say incorrect. And this is how I will then um, do speech test. And um, I'll go over to the right side. I can also do the right side exactly the same. Also doing speech test here by presenting the word, saying correct and correct here. And you'll see on the left hand side the percentages, um, how well the patient actually rec recognizes discriminated words. Then I press save. And there's a follow up question for that asking about what type of computer, laptop, tablet is needed to run this software? So you need a Windows um, operating system and typically you need two USB ports on that computer or tablet. Because the audiometer is actually two audiometers, there's electronics on the one side and electronics on the other side that connects via USB cable to the PC. But because it's two audiometers, it's two cables going to the PC, so you need two USB ports. Okay. And you need an entry level PC. Okay, so nothing too uh, sophisticated. Okay. Uh, next question comes in about training. So it, it's not clear, but maybe training on the software, but also the hardware. Is that part of the installation and the purchase that there would be training involved? Yes, so there's multiple um, levels of training. First of all, the software is very intuitive. Okay. If you know something about audiology, you will understand what's going on there. But there are also an online academy. So it's a URL that I can forward to you guys. And if you click on it, there's a, about a 45 minutes of videos and these documents that you can read and so on. And after an hour training, um, you will have to fill in a, a questionnaire and um, we will evaluate the questions and you will get a good way proficiency certificate. Okay. Not necessarily practical that you can know uh, how you've used it, but you know how to do it. If the training happens there, then we can also do um, online training and we do that a lot, especially for the international clients. Um, we, we need about an hour with uh, the person and we use it by a combination combination of team viewer and Skype or Hangouts and that training is as if I am next to the um, trainee. Um, I, I usually do it or sometimes our audiologist will do it. Okay, that's perfect. And then I guess another follow-up question with that is regarding maintenance and repair, um, so something beyond what are the typical repairs needed and is that a training you can provide for how to, to uh, maintenance these? Okay, so first of all the device has got a three-year warranty. Okay. Um, it really doesn't break. Okay. We had a problem the other day where, where a courier company drove over the Kudu wave we could not fix that one, okay. but they, they usually don't break. If, if something fails, it's either the software, something like a virus on the PC that's causing the software to run, so antivirus scanner or a virus causing problems with the software, 
Um, the other thing is maybe the USB cable can break. It's a standard mini USB cable. If it breaks over time of usage, you just steal the printer cable or you go and find yourself another one. The other thing that um, for support was is this, these tubes can sometimes get a little hole in or they become very hard. But there's always a packet of six in the case that you um, can uh, that you can use. The audiometer doesn't go out of calibration, but um, we require to see the audiometer once a year, or someone must calibrate it once a year. Okay, um, just always to make sure everything is still fine. Um, but typically, you have to do a calibration um, um, check when you either you do a test to make sure everything is still fine. We do have a new part, new um, feature on the Kudu Wave that we will soon officially launch, but we've already sold a few of them. It's a little cavity, a little thing, little hole here at the bottom where you will plug your tube in, okay, and that tube will play sound into the Kudu Wave. The speaker will play sound into the Kudu Wave, and it will check the calibration. Once you've got that set up, um, the calibration will always be verified before you start testing, so it's very little support needed. The, the cups don't break, um, nothing really breaks on the device. If it's a big problem, like an electronic problem, we had two or three problems with that, we will have to see the machine on our site. Okay. Uh, perfect. And then there's a, a follow-up question. You mentioned calibration. Uh, one of the attendees is asking about how is it automatically calibrated? Does it need to be sent back to the warehouse for recalibration at certain times? Uh, how was that function? Okay, so that um, little hole at the bottom, that just checks calibration. Okay, Calibration has got certain standards to comply to. It's an ANSI S3.6 standard in in in, in USA, um, New Zealand, Australia. They've got 8253, and each country has got their own standards to comply to. Those are typically very expensive, high quality machines. We do those calibrations in house. We do hundreds a month, but um, any person with Calibration equipment can do it. So it's, it's not just us that can do calibration. So if a company in another country wants to do calibration, they just need to contact us. We send them a special type of software to program the Kudu Wave calibrations. They will do the calibration, they will change the values, and they will program the Kudu Wave to have new calibration values. doesn't need to be us. We request as, as manufacturer that you do a calibration once a year. If you've got this little adapter at the bottom called the cross check, if you've got the cross check, you only have to do it from our side every three years. We have to keep in mind that um, each country might have different legislations. For it's a, um, circumstance, certain circumstances in South Africa, you have to calibrate every year, in Australia every two years, sometimes in occupational healthcare, a mobile audiometer has to be calibrated every three months, but it all depends from country to country. But that's legislative. We we are happy with once a year, or once every three year is, years if you've got the cross check. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, so there's a couple other questions about spare parts and replacement and things like that. So those are items that uh, we actually sell through Via Global Health, uh, like the foam tips as well. So for anyone that has questions about making purchases of the device or of the foam tips, please reach out to me directly or go to the Via site uh, for more information. And we're happy to help with that. But the last one that's not related to the product there is just about sterilization. They mentioned that they assume it's only the foam tips. Is there any other part of the device that can or should be sterilized? So the foam tips are disposable foam tips, of course. Okay. Um, the, the, these tubes are PVC. 
Okay, so they antibacterial. They the, um, they actually don't carry bacteria. The thing that you might need to wipe is typically we'll do this. Okay, and you take a wipe and you wipe these things with a wet wipe or alcohol swab. Um, they will typically do that in multi-drug resistant TB. We don't want the one TB to go to another patient's TB. But um, most most audiologists never clean this clean them specifically, except if it's really indicated. It's like a stethoscope. Very seldom a doctor will clean the stethoscope from one patient to another one. But important is the ear tips. You put it into the ear, there's wax, there might be infection there. You have to replace that. Okay, that makes sense. So one last question actually from me. You had mentioned uh, Australia and South Africa and parts of the US. So where is the CUDA wave currently being used throughout the world? Um, it, we started in South Africa, so most good waves are in South Africa, or Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Botswana, etc., and going north. Um, but there's virtually a good wave in probably not every country, but but even South America, Guatemala, USA, and there's nothing in Canada because they've got special regulation. Lots of them in Europe, India. Australia, Singapore, Vietnam, yes. So, ba so basically everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say everywhere. Let's say in 30% in okay. of countries in the world. Great, that's perfect. Um, so I, I don't see any other questions. If anyone has questions following the call, please do feel free to contact me directly. If you have questions or you would like to learn more, you can go to the VIA Global Health site um, and look into more information about the CUDA wave. But otherwise, what I'd like to do is just thank Dr. Dirk for joining us and for taking you through the demonstration. Uh, so thank you, sir, and I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone else on the line. Uh, if, again, you have questions, please feel free to follow up with me directly. Thank you very much and everyone have a great day.